finals on June 24th. Experience the tradition on pay-per-view. city of South Africa in the Cape Province, a beautiful scenic place with the Victoria and Albert waterfront and there's an aerial view of Cape Town. This city bidding to be the host of the Summer Olympic Games in the year 2004 and indeed lately some reports say that it's the favourite city to host the Olympic Games, Cape Town, venue of this afternoon's Rugby World Cup second semi-final. Here's the location. And it's a beautiful afternoon as you join us. Happy Father's Day in South Africa it is. As you join us for this afternoon's big match from Newlands in Cape Town. And you see what a completely different presentation it is today for the spectators and players to enjoy from the very difficult conditions in Durban yesterday when South Africa won their way through to the finals. Today it's shirts off for some and uh, much more relaxed in the crowd before this afternoon's big game. Yes, indeed. Signs here. There are the New Zealand supporters sitting in the crowd. Some of them all set for this afternoon's game. It's a very big crowd and a very big atmosphere for this game. And we're getting set for a good one between New Zealand and England. Today, the England team bid to play in their way into their second World Cup final. And New Zealand trying to get in the final for the first time since 1987 when, of course, they won the Rugby World Cup. And... A lot of fun in the crowd today. It's going to be pretty well a packed house. And that's a very good effort considering there's no South African interest in them playing of this game. The interest is high just in enjoying the rugby and seeing who the opponents will be for the Springboks next weekend. And of course a huge game for New Zealand this afternoon. We'd like to welcome our New Zealand viewers to this telecast today and also our viewers on Prime Network in the United States, TSN in Canada, RTM in Malaysia, throughout the Pacific, as well as New Zealand. And John Hart is with me. It should be a tremendous game today, John. Yeah, I think it'll be a really exciting clash between two teams with contrasting styles. Let's meet the two teams now. Back to John Hart in just a minute. Fullback for the New Zealand team, one of the young stars of last season in this. And the, his biggest test yet, Glenn Osborn. As for this man, who's been one of the real stars of the tournament, Jonah Lomu. Walter Little, the experienced midfielder, will be in the second 5'8 jersey for New Zealand. And Frank Bunce, who's even more experienced, 32 test matches, his second World Cup. Jeff Wilson onto the wing today, forcing out Mark Ellis, the inform other winger. He's in the reserves today. And an important man in the New Zealand team plan will be Andrew Mertens in number 10, in partnership with his Canterbury teammate, Graham Bashup. Today, Graham Bashup playing his 28th test. Into the forwards and back after missing the last game is Craig Dowd in the front row. Sean Fitzpatrick, the captain, will be the hooker today playing his 67th test match and completing the all Auckland front row is Olo Brown. He'll be on the tight hit side. Mike Brewer comes into the team as the blindside flanker wearing number six. There's the first of the New Zealand locks today from North Harbour. That's Ian Jones. Robin Brook partners him. He'll be wearing the number five shirt. And the open side flanker for New Zealand, he'll be wearing the headgear, the scrum cap, will be number seven, Josh Kronfeld. And the vastly experienced Zinzan Brook in his third World Cup will be number eight. The All Blacks are coached by Laurie Maines from the deep south of the South Island, the Otago province. Now let's meet their opponents today. The England team, fullback is a transplanted South African, Mike Catt and Rory Underwood. Born in Malaya will be on one wing. Jeremy Guscott will be at the inside centre position. And the England captain, Will Carling, will be in the outside centre position wearing number 13. 
and the second of the Underwood brothers, the score of the winning try, if you like, last week here to get through to the semi-finals, Tony Underwood, and there's the man who kicked the winning drop goal, number 10, Rob Andrew, MBE. Halfback is Dewey Morris, 31 years of age, and into the forwards for England, in the front row here's Jason Leonard, who's the most capped England prop forward ever. Here's the most capped hooker ever, Brian Moore, the one they nicknamed the Pit Bull. Victor Ubogu is the other prop forward for the England team. And into the second row, we look at the towering figure of Tim Rodby. You see 2 meters 01, a very tall middle row. Martin Johnson, 2 meters 04. He'll be one of the locks. Look at the height of this man, Martin Bayfield, 2 meters 12. That's 6 foot 10 inches in the old measurements. And Ben Clark, 1 meter 99. A real uh, towering second row for England. And at the back is the vastly experienced Leicester player, Dean Richards. And there's the England coach, Jack Rowell. Excellent ground service, John Hart. You've been down there and had a walk on the pitch. Yes, the ground is in superb condition, just a little bit soft where the, uh, I guess, the shade is, but in superb condition, not much wind. The conditions uh, really are made for the ball to move today, and I guess that's what we're going to really wait to see because I'm sure the All Blacks will try to move the ball. Certainly they'll put the ball in the air at times, but I'm sure they will be out to speed up the game, to play the quick lineouts, to move the ball through their hands and test this English defence. England, by comparison, we would look, I think, to try to get their dominance through their, their back three and Dewey Morris and particularly Rob Andrew. But don't be surprised, in my view, to see them try to move the ball occasionally today because they believe that the All Blacks are slightly exposed in defence out wide and that way they may try to attack. If it's not with the boot putting, turning the young wingers back, it may be with quick ball to try and have Tony Wonderwood running at Jonah Lomu. So those are the prospects. The match is ahead of us. A place in the final is the reward, and a big crowd here at Newlands. This is the ground where the tournament began just uh, nearly a month ago. A marvellous win by South Africa over Australia. Steph Neething is here, one of the touch judges today, and down the corridor on that lonely walk, alone with their thoughts, everything's been said. The New Zealanders come, led by their vastly experienced captain, Sean Fitzpatrick. Behind him, Craig Dowd, back in the New Zealand team today, ahead of Richard Lowe. Bashup and Mertens, big Jonah with the two little nicks above his left eyebrow, which uh, look like number 11, which is the number he wears on his back. There's the England team, they're out first. Sean Fitzpatrick will bring New Zealand on second. to a beautifully grasped Newlands field comes Will Carling captaining England extending the world record for captaincy in a test match 52nd time today and they're all looking very set for this afternoon's game temperature 23 degrees New Zealand players there Sean Fitzpatrick captaining for the 27th time but he's the world record holder for most tests by a hooker in the number two jersey that's uh, 67 today second highest is uh, Brian Moore who's his opponent this afternoon lots of flags Union Jacks New Zealand flags the England flag the cross of St George and the players forming up now for the playing of the national anthems today remember today's referee we'll meet him a bit later is an Irishman Stephen Hilditch so now all is set for the playing of the second semi-final and the formality now the national anthems
the biggest game of their life when you think about these young guys and even players like Fitzpatrick who have won the World Cup in the past. time these two teams met in late 1993 England were the winners by 15 points to nine there were no tries scored in that game players like Zinzan Brook were there that day and they're getting set for the Haka now and it's going to be led by Zinzan Brook and there's big John Olomu Mike Brewer likes to get out on the edge of the Haka and England is going to stand right up on the halfway line and face it of the New Zealand team's hopes rest with Jonah Lomu. There is the New Zealand team with four changes, including one positional from the side which beat Scotland in the quarterfinals. Wilson onto the wing today from fullback. Osborne is back there. Brewer onto the blindside flank. Dowd back at uh, prop forward. And all is set. As we meet the England team, it's exactly the same team that won here seven days ago in that dramatic quarterfinal victory over Australia they've gone with confidence with the same 15 coach Jack Rowell believes these are the players to take England into their second consecutive World Cup final there's a lot of crackle in the air John Hart certainly is it's a tremendous atmosphere at Newlands the All Blacks are a very focused looking team today the Harker was done with real feeling and no one did it with more feeling more than Jonah Lomu and he really took it to the Englishman and he'll be the player they'll fear he'll be the player that is really he's the player that set this tournament alight and if he can get it right together today if he can get the ball in hand and make the breaks at the speed of a loose forwards which could be a crucial factor to an to a uh, all-black victory this afternoon there's the New Zealand reserve camp there Mark Ellis uh, second in the back row there particularly unlucky to miss out but uh, some nervous young men there too awaiting the outcome. They've said they can do no more, John. Yes, I was talking to a few of them just before the game and uh, Ant Strawn was saying he thinks the preparation being as good as they could have got it. They've done it well. They're well prepared. Lucky to go into the game without injuries and they really haven't had a bad run with injuries, which is very important in a tournament like this. Belfast headmaster Stephen Hilditch is today's referee. His touch judge is a Frenchman and uh, South African Joel Dume and Steph Neithling. Dume to the near side, Neithling to the far side. So it's a truly international panel here this afternoon as we get set to go. And so a quiet word there from Steve Hilditch. So away they go in the second semi-final and straight away it's kicked to Jonah Lomu and there's a fumble by the England team and Walter Little has got New Zealand away to a good start. And uh, there's a bit of holding back on Frank Bunsen. Did the referee see it? No, it's a knock-on by England. Excellent start by New Zealand. They caught the Englishman napping. They played the ball to Jonah Lomu's side and a... A mistake by the English backs. All backs attack. 
Robertson. Jan Brook is the number eight forward. Number nine is Graham Bashup. Out it goes to Mertens. Long ball out to Frank Barnes. It just went past Osborne. Here's Wilson, number 14. Good, confident beginning by the New Zealanders. Just a pass astray in the back line. But it's a positive attitude. And maybe the wingers like Lomu and Wilson are going to be in the action all day. Excellent start by the All Blacks. Trying to get the ball on their hands. Good clearance from Mertens and Bashup. Bunch trying to make the outside gap. Vital lineouts. Now, can New Zealand win line-out ball? It's one of the big question marks. A lot will depend on the throwing of the captain. Can he get it on the calls to the designated man? And can they keep the game going? Fitzpatrick throws. Ian Jones got the tip. Bashup. Mertens have a good pick-up. He was a bit of a clean-out there on Andrew Mertens. Gus got. Osborne is there. England now. A bit of erratic play there by Osborne. New Zealand goes back to halfway. And now Bashup to Mertens. Tremendous run there by Mike Brewer. New Zealand have begun the game at the pace. I think they'll want to play it. Walter Little, Frank Bunce takes the tackle. No sign yet of an early penalty by referee Hilditch. Bash up again, New Zealand maintaining possession. Wide to Lomu. He's got the bounce. He's handed it off his opposite. Lomu. and pump he's over for the early try two minutes into the game Jonah Lomu a standing ovation let's enjoy this again what a sensational start Bashup did it well he cleared the space the ball went a little wide but Lomu pushes off one and then Carling comes at him he puts him off and then he goes straight over the top of the last defender and scores a brilliant try for the All Blacks. A magic start for the All Blacks. Watch Bashup managed to create the space on the outside, but Lomu had a lot of work to do. He pushed Underwood off. He's gone straight down the line. Carling didn't get near him. Off balance. Gets over the top of Cat and scores the try. It's hard to believe this man just two years ago was playing schoolboy rugby and now he's shocking and amazing and delighting the rugby world from whichever perspective you look at it there's never been a player like John Olamu on the wing in terms of physical statistics but what talent he has as well now the conversion attempt is from New Zealand's other young star Andrew Mertens Mertens pushes it away. Some excellent play by the All Blacks, but once again, to me, Graham Bashup played a very important hand because it was he who went back and got the ball when they were under pressure. He created the attack on the right. The ruck was won, and then he made the distribution. A brilliant start from the halfback, who's had a very, very good tournament. Rob Andrew, the star from last week, is to kick out. The amazing thing is we've had four and a bit minutes of play, and England have hardly touched the ball. So it's a grand beginning by New Zealand and a big jump by Robin Brook. Bashup. Straight to Walter Little. Look at the confidence and daring of these players. Osman. Not two and five minutes. Little. It is two and five minutes. Kronfeld. question is which was the better try that one went 80 meters the all blacks are on fire watch Walter little the ball comes to him badly he thinks about what to do he goes through Guscott then he puts on the pace and Osborne was in support takes the ball he works Osborne and then Osborne put on the gas he goes to Cat, he gives the ball inside to Little, and Little plays the angles well. Gives it to Osman, held up, but the Kronfeldt is there in support to get the try. They're on their feet in the New Zealand camp. Well, Norm Hewitt is. They, can't, they surely can't believe this either. This is an absolute dream start for the All Blacks. 
but they are breaking the English defence with hard physical running. John, they must show courage and daring and discipline in playing this game. The discipline looks to be there. The courage and daring already well displayed. Yes, they really are controlled. They're in control at the ball of the ball, and they're backing themselves. And that's what they've got to do. They've got the ability to do that. As cold as ice is the young man from Canterbury. And look at the watches. Six minutes gone. New Zealand 10. England nil. Cronfeld's try is converted. New Zealand 12. England nil. Cronfeld's try is converted. It's a sensational beginning by the All Blacks. <clears throat> but hold on. This is a very talented and experienced England team. And Andrew has drop kicked for goal from where he kicked last week, just about. And this time it's a miss. Now, he's the key man behind the England team when they do get into this game with that very sure geometric kicking game, which we know so well from Andrew, with all the experiences has, he has in his 68 test matches so far. Mertens kicks deep. Morris is number nine at halfway. Richards, they're holding it in the field of play. Ubogu into Fitzpatrick. Now here's where England is strong, but they're down by 12 to nil. And Rodba is dumped by Zinzanbrook. And Morris has it again. Interesting, John. We've had all this play. No penalty yet. It's a, it's a standard practice in rugby. There's a couple of penalties in the first few minutes. The referee is uh, controlling well and not looking to blow the whistle. He's giving the players the opportunity to play the game. Lomu will try, Kronfeld will try. A wonderful conversion by Mertens. 12 points to nil. And there is the first penalty. And that's against Graham Bash if he was ahead of the uh, back feet. Somebody is down here in the New Zealand team. It's Kronfeld. Interesting that the um, early on you've seen the English focusing their attack on Andrew Mertens occasionally. Rodba firstly ran through him and then from that scrum set move. Carling was given a short pass and ran straight at Mertens trying to upset him and win the ball. Blair Larson warming up. Heavily bandaged leg, has been in doubt all week. Kronfeld, who's been a very important player for the All Blacks in this tournament, he's up and limping back into position. Rob Andrews will have a long kick for goal to try and get some credibility into the English team. Just a bit of concern about the hamstring there of Josh Kronfeld. This is a straight kick for Rob Andrew. You saw that statistic, 378 points in Test Rugby, comes in with the crouched approach. And he has hooked that badly away. Now that is a surprise, and that's an indication that that early start by New Zealand is putting genuine pressure on some of these crafty and experienced England players. 11 minutes gone. bad miss for England because they really must get points to stay in this game. Keeping them guessing. The referees just said hurry up. And so Mertens this time kicks it deep and it's an awkward bouncer. And it goes to Tony Underwood. Here's his first chance to run. He sights Salomu and then perhaps thought better of it. That's what it looked like. 
Cronfeld has ripped in hard there. And there's a penalty for, against Moore going over the top. Uh, sorry, Johnson. Martin Johnson, number four. There he is. He once played for the New Zealand Colts, Martin Johnson, when he came out and had a season or two in the King Country. Yes, I had the privilege of uh, coaching him in that year, and he's certainly uh, grown to be something very, very strong in the middle of the English pack since those days. So it's going to be a, a chance for goal for Andrew Mertens. Well, the All Blacks hit England with a firestorm right from the start. When the referee turned, you saw the referee turn at the just before the kickoff and speak to Mertens. He said, which way are you kicking at, lad? Is it just a standard kick? And Mertens said, yes, sir. Then when the whistle went, he promptly kicked it the other way. So they were giving absolutely no secrets away to the New Zealand team, not even to the referee, before the start. There's the score up there, and 11 and a half minutes gone. So Mertens is well and truly underway, and the New Zealand team now continue to shock. The England team are now down by 15 points, and can you believe it? Nobody would have picked this, I dare to say. That New Zealand would be better than a point a minute after 13. So that's, you see, where the sun is on that side of the field. It's difficult to catch there, and they've lost control of this one. Accidentally offside. English looking, England looking to get some momentum from that kickoff, but made the mistake, and now it's the All Black ball inside their own 22. Mertens, big thump, good save, not a great kick, not going for too much distance. Very important, however, to hit touch, and he's done that. Kick two very important goals in the first stages of a game to really give New Zealand a really demanding, a top start. Referee Hilditch insisting on the gaps. There's Johnson at the front. Behind him is number five, Bayfield. Six is Rodbus, seven for England is Clark, eight is Richards. Ta tap by Rod, but Ubogu. Now, was that a knock-on? The referee says it was not forward, so Morris gets it away again to Andrew. And there's the first test for Osborne at fullback. Carling coming on him. Osborne took it well. Where's the ball going, though? It's on the New Zealand side. Bashup makes the clearance. And that's a good one by Graham Bashup. Outstanding play by the young fullback there. He had a very difficult take. Gus got challenged him in the air, and Osmond equal to a challenge. Not only did he make the catch, but he fell in such a way that his forwards could win the ruck ball for Bashup to put it downfield into the English half. An excellent clearance. So halfway line slightly to the right for the throw by Brian Moore. Conferl is number seven for New Zealand. Six is Brewer. New Zealand are going well at line-out time. They've got that one off the England throw. Away to Mertens. And there's New Zealand's high test for Mike Catt. The referee has his hand out for an advantage. And the referee is saying that uh, the player was uh, attacked in the air in the tackle. Was certainly correct in the call when he was playing the advantage to see whether or not England got anything out of it, but Cat was taken out of the game. Andrews safely to touch on the far side. They're not playing much over near the cameras. There's the time gone, coming up to a quarter of an hour and 15 points on the board for New Zealand. Lomu has seen the ball just once. What a try that was, followed by the brilliant 80-metre dash by New Zealand and Cronfeld touched it down in the end. 15 to nil. This is a shock start by New Zealand. I would venture to suggest nobody would have picked this. New Zealand have started very well at line out time, which is a vital part of the game for them. Bayfield, Morris, Andrew, Gus Clark in midfield. 
This is a very big England pack. And they have it. Morris has come out with the ball. Andrew, a long angled one. Now, this is the one they, they think they can get behind Jonah Lomu, but Osman has it covered. And uh, Jonah's going to have, have a run or a kick. Boom, he's put a big hoof on it. And it's gone to Cat. Cat again. And that one is way wide. And so there'll be a line out back where he kicked it. That's out on the full. Mike Cat, who went to England on a holiday, has never been on the losing side. Fifteen to mil, sixteen minutes gone. Come on, no call. Come on, no call. Now, Steve Hilditch wants to speak to Sean Fitzpatrick. So that was about a little scuffle taking place in the middle of the field while that last uh, kick down to Alomu's wing was happening. The referee just says to Fitzpatrick, quieten it. Johnson's got that one off the New Zealand throw. Fitzpatrick goes through, gets Morris. Very efficient England pack. Referee ruled that there was a ruck, neither side going forward. He's given it to the attacking team, so it's an English scrum. And this is where the All Blacks will want to put some pressure on. First opportunity, Yubogo, Yubogo under pressure on this side already. Here it comes up and under. Offside, well, that was the one that was heading for Jonah Lomu, but it never got there because the referee picked the offside. It's a penalty for New Zealand on halfway. Fifteen points to nil if you've just joined this telecast. Not even a quarter of the game gone yet. So they're going for touch to get the line out thrown. Nice little kick by Mertens just gains about 10 metres and now New Zealand's line out tactics will come under scrutiny again. So far in line out ball it's three to England and two to New Zealand. And that's the vital part of the game. On the New Zealand side, Robin Brook is very athletic, a lock forward, and Andrew's getting in the way there. Referee says play on, Johnson. Bassett gets across. A knock on, England scrum. Well, now the game is settled in. The England pack are uh, working in a very vigorous way, but that early points advantage means England are going to have to work doubly hard to get into this game. New Zealand line out working well Keith I mean that was a uh, magnificent jump at the back by Ian Jones and uh, Robin Brook capitalized on it to drive the ball into the mid. It's Ubogo against Dowd on the near side. Morris a little one out towards Rory Underwood. Jeff Wilson is back. Oh, lovely push by Wilson to Osborne. Osborne to, to Brewer. And they are playing with confidence. That was a nice little delicate push by Jeff Wilson. And there's a nice kick by Bashup, which Cat has to use soccer skills. Robin Brook then puts a big hoof on it. And look at that one, get, having the England players going back. Sky kick by Ben Clark. Zim Zanbrook, he's trying a drop kick from a million miles out. What a goal! What an amazing goal by Zim Zanbrook. And he is the perfect man for this. Look at that. About 38 metres out, he put the big hoof on it and it curled in. He'll never stop talking about that one, John, as long as he lives. It was a great kick. 18 to nil. All his life, Zinzan Brook has fancied himself as a punter and a kicker of the ball. You remember that test match against the Springboks at Wellington last year? He had two drop goal attempts, and they were beauties, but just missed. This one went over. 
all of the practice he has every practice you'll see him looking to have a drop kick and he got his chance then and that will be demoralizing for the english a poor kick i think it was carling who kicked for touch missed it badly his forwards sunk their heads as uh, zinzan brooks kick sailed between the post and that was a real knocker for the english who are really having trouble getting into this game john that's a that's a a compliment to all those games that Zin Zanbrook plays with his teammates, having little side bets about who can kick this goal, who can kick that goal at practice. He got the opportunity in a World Cup semi-final and banged it over. But here's Andrew trying to keep the gap at 15. They are really feeling the pressure, and there's no better example than when probably, arguably, the greatest goal kicker in the world, maybe at this tournament, has missed two very badly. 18 points to nil. A quarter of the game gone, the All Blacks lead. Has anybody ever kicked a drop goal from the forwards for the All Blacks, John? I can't remember. I think Colin Meads or Wilson Winneray got one away in Adelaide sometime. But good, that's amazing. High ball. Midfield, Robin Brook. The All Blacks are playing with tremendous confidence. You know, there are little things happening throughout the game where they're just relying on their skill. Saw an incident before where Wilson went back and flicked the ball up to Osborne, and then in the back forwards, then they flicked it away to him again. Blacks uh, putting the heat on the English scrum there and if you had a look they had two forwards off at one stage so they really that's what you've got to do to them. Bash up watched by Morris, Heider Mertens, this cool customer banging it deep but not attempting to find the touch he wants Cat to kick it out or touch it down and that's what Cat will do. And so England now have to kick back at the New Zealand team. see that here in the Cape a lot of support for New Zealand but I've got to say there is huge support here for England kicking into that area of bright sunlight again that will gradually disappear off the field that shadow and we'll play the second half without any problem with shadow at all whistles gone Jack Rowell there in the centre of the screen. A solemn look on his face, the England coach. Sinzan Brook. Mertens into the backs again, Little. Straight to Lomu. Bunch stumbling around. The cheer went up from the crowd when Lomu got the ball. Coming again to Lomu way, but he's waiting in field. Bashup is aggressive, isn't he? Cronfeld, oh, tipped off by the fingers of Ian Jones. An advantage being played. Cat. Guscott. Tony Underwood. Coming across from his wing. Morris. Moore. Cat again. Andrew. Carling. Well taken by Walter Little, who knocked his ankles together. Craig Dowd, down and up. Well done at halfway. Bashup, counter-attack, Mertens to Wilson, 22 metre line, Mertens. England will get it, will they? No, it's on the New Zealand side. Zinzan Brook, he can pass the ball as well, look at this. Right out to Osman, to Lomu. Look out, Lomu in again. Superb pressure, once again, superbly converted to points. Jonah Lomu. Well, another brilliant...
brilliant piece of rugby from the All Blacks that is playing the game at such a pace. Look at the pass from Zinzambrook. Lomu had to beat Andrews, and Andrew was beaten, and Lomu a clear run into the post. But again, the All Blacks from their own 22 showed their ability to attack, went down the flank. Wilson did it very well, and it was in Zinzanbrook. He can drop kick, but he also passed the ball halfway across the track to give Lomu a clear run in for another try. And the All Blacks are absolutely on fire, and none of the backs in the English side can tackle this black machine today. Twenty-five points to nil. The biggest losing margin England has ever had in a test is twenty-seven. Jack Rowell looking well composed, I suppose, is the best word. Shattered might be another. Andrew kicks out. It's twenty-five to nil. Twenty-five minutes gone. It's still a point a minute. And what a great game Bashup is having. He never does the same thing twice in a row. Wilson and Rory Underwood. That was a good run down that wing a wee while ago by Jeff Wilson. Lomu, though, is awesome on the other side. Morris. Andrew. Osmond coming forward, so is Gus Scott and Cat. <laughs> 20 metres out. Basher again. A deflection by Rodber. Seven. And there he stands off. This is just 15 metres out. It comes to Clark, but they're fumbling. Now did Andrew go behind a the player then? He's kicked towards the corner. Wilson's got it covered. The English look to me to be disorganised. They really don't have any fluency. The forwards standing upright trying to win the ball, and Andrew had gave himself very little option by putting that one behind the goal line. The All Black pressure is just too much for them at this stage, and they are not responding at all. Well, you look at these England players, and apart from the size, especially of the middle row, they have great personal statistics and records of achievement in the game. 28 minutes gone. 25 to nil. And that one seemed to go forward. It's an advantage for New Zealand. Bashup. He dumps it to touch on the full, so the advantage is going to apply for that ball going from one lock to the other. All Blacks playing with such confidence. Mertens to look for the clearance here, or will it be an attack? Bash up straight to Little for the long kick across field. Cat has got it covered. Wilson is there close by. Mike Cat is known as the runner, and he was scragged by Bunce. And now Moore seemed to protect the ball a bit there. And the referee goes back to an earlier infringement. He's Ten metres for Bashup ripping the ball away. Morris takes it. They're not going for the penalty shots. Clark. Ben Clark, a big member of the Lions team in New Zealand in 93. Andrew in pass to Dean Richards. To Victor Ubogu. There's the 22-metre line, Morris. A fumble by Andrews. By Andrew, he's having a shocker. Two big misses, a couple of wrong options, and a clean fumble under pressure there. Rob Andrew, named in the Queen's birthday honours list just uh, 48 hours ago, Rob Andrew, MBE. Well, he might have been reading the papers a little because, honestly, his game is not on song here today. That was the first time you actually saw the English team get a little bit of momentum with, through the forwards. Ubogo and uh, Richards creating it. And then a very good ruck ball with a try-scoring opportunity on. Still had some work to do, but Andrew has dropped the ball. It's 
stop in the game. A buzz in the air. Martin Johnson was the injured player. It's going to be a New Zealand put in. Half an hour gone. 25 to nil. New Zealand leading. Three sensational tries. Mertens. Cat. And look at that. England are just totally off the boil. Well, Mertens wouldn't have been happy with that kick because he did actually go for touch, but Cat has uh, helped it on its way, and the All Blacks as well now get the ball to the line out. Look to Ian Jones at the back. Four man line out. Jones couldn't quite get the second grab at it. It's gone to Martin Bayfield, the big policeman. Now Dewey Morris punches his kick towards Lomu. Tony Underwood coming at him. Lomu brushed him aside as though he wasn't there. He goes right through the famous England tackler, Tim Rodber. Well, Bassett was keen to maybe take this one, but Fitzpatrick standing there exercising a measure of control. He wants Andrew Mertens to take the shot for goal. But John Lomu did well here under pressure. Pushes off Underwood, and then he sets off, and he takes another three Englishmen. First, I think it might have been Rodber or Morrison, then it's Rodber here. He goes over the top of Rodber. Johnson comes in with a strong tackle, but critical. The All Blacks won the ruck. He hit the ground, they won the ruck. meters out on the angle for Mertens with 33 minutes gone so it stayed right and Cat touches down 25 to nil seven minutes to play till halftime a disastrous start for Will Carling's England team well they've never played under this kind of pressure before so turnover there has gone to England watch this all black scrum they're really looking to put pressure on Ubogo on this side. All Blacks firstly pushing the shove and then trying to screw the scrum to upset the delivery for the halfback. But once again, they're attacking on this side and then we'll see if they try to screw. This time it goes down. having a nice discussion with the uh, front rowers and I think he's at least decided this time the All Blacks have said too much and gone too far down <laughs> Morris is urging the English side on but they're slow to the line out the All Black camp must be very, very happy with this magnificent start. More throws. Outside arm, was it, by Johnson? Referee has not ruled on it. You must swing only with the uh, inside arm and a line out on that side of the field at your right hand. 
they're mauling it now. It's in the possession of number seven, Ben Clark, at the back there. So England have broken free. They're about 35 metres out. Richards rips. So that was against the penalty's Cromfeld. gone against Cromfelt. Yes, he was uh, holding the ball as they were trying to get it back finally at the ruck. England, therefore, starting to try the mauling game to try and take the pressure through the All Black pack, but uh, they're not going to score many tries doing that. And I just don't know whether they've got the armory or the ability to run the ball consistently. Laurie Maines would have to be very, very happy with his excellent start by this supercharged All Black side today. Although, again, on those coaches' faces, you can read very little into the, the emotions that must be churning them up. Jack Rowell and Laurie Maines, poker face there in the stands. Now, Andrew's had two bad misses, but not this time. England are on the board. 36 minutes gone. They have a penalty from Rob Andrews, but it's New Zealand 25 and England 3. Watching the ball in the air from the kickoff. Mertens will be targeting for Ian Jones, for Robin Brock. Well, it's on the New Zealand side. Where's the referee say? Tipped by one of the black team. are untidy Keith at the moment both sides trying to put the pressure on kick coming up from uh, Morris perhaps a belated singing of a uh, swing low sweet chariot and again it's been taken around too fast Fitzpatrick having the usual interchange of ideas with the opposite uh, front row it's good that we discuss things in these important games He'd be getting the dominant voice in at the moment. Look at the two props there, John. Right across the other yeah, way. He has uh, penalised the uh, All Blacks for that, and here's the penalty taken quickly by England. Morris. Carling. A bit of space here for Carling. Lomu. Tony Underwood. Lomu's coming at him. <laughs> Jonah nods at him. That was a lovely chase by Lomu. There was real pressure. Two of the great runners of English rugby coming at him. Lomu and did well here because Carling put Underwood slightly outside Lomu and Lomu had to turn and chase. And he's certainly done that. And he's done it very, very well indeed. Frank Bunce has been called out by the referee. claimed that uh, Carling was taken out late. He's played the advantage and calls this an advantage. I'm not sure England would see it as an advantage. A line out to, to the All Blacks when they could have had the penalty 20 yards back. The All Blacks will want to go to half time, not conceding any more points. A minute to play. Zinzan Brook has got that sensational drop goal. Plus three tries and Merton's kicks. Knock on by England. Referee's getting a lot of advice from the English forwards here. And so we're right on half time. It's 25 to 3. The All Blacks lead England. Trouble in the front row. Further exchange of ideas. And they're pointing at uh, Craig Dowd, who might have let go a little uh, rip in underneath. A lot of finger pointing. 
And the referee, the headmaster, is going to call out the naughty boys. There's no need for that. <laughs> He's told... Uh, <laughs> He told both the hookers that he's sure they weren't innocent in it. He's not sure what happened, and he's told the other two to keep their fists to themselves. So he's decided we'll just get on with the game. And then a little quip just to get them started with, which brought a smile to Fitzpatrick's face. Right on half time, and again they crab the scrum across the field. Penalised Ubogu for going in on the angle. So here is an all black. Free kick. Looking for the quick one. Well punted by Mertens. Back to Caddis. Not quite half time. Cat. The big thump. Straight to Osborn. And he's claimed a fair catch. Well, a lot of question marks about Osborn, John, but he's had a few problems in the tournament. He's had a very good first half. He's had an excellent start. I mean, he showed a lot of courage under the high ball. And he's got into the game with on attack. What a magnificent first 40 minutes by New Zealand. They lead by 25 to 3. They jog to the new halftime position. England walk dejectedly to theirs. There's the halftime gap. Stay with us. More action after halftime. Well, everybody in the stadium is buzzing with what has been achieved mostly by New Zealand in the first 40 minutes. John Hutt, Jack Rell has got a lot to think on as he walks out to see his team. Well, really, the pressure that the All Blacks have put on with the ball in hand uh, has been too much for England to handle. And at the stage, the All Blacks are totally dominant. England really don't seem to have yet any organisational skills to get out of of the situation they're in. Their key players, Rob Andrew, not responding to the pressure. But the All Blacks, the young guns, are certainly playing well. The pack is getting the ball that they so badly need. And now they've just got to come around and start the second half in the same fashion, to keep positive, not to sit on a lead, but to make sure they keep taking the game to the English because the English defence has been extremely brittle. England camp working through how will they come out in the second half. They would have done all the work all week. They would have talked about how they're going to play the game. They would have talked about the control that they would have looked, how they were going to defend in the midfield. All the things they wanted to do haven't happened. And now the challenge for them. Do they come up with their heads high with a big second half? Can they regroup? All Black supporters ecstatic, absolutely enjoying this magic power. <laughs> Crowd, I think, stunned to a degree. Stunned in the fact that no one expected this. So in the half-time break, New Zealand reserves just keeping uh, limber. In case they're called into the game, and drawn to the right. Blair Larson, Richard Lowe. And lots of support from New Zealand in this match this afternoon. So there's the New Zealand coach, Laurie Maines, talking with Stephen Culhane. I wonder what that's all about. Uh, John, do you think he might come into the game somehow? Well, it looks like someone may have a slight injury. And uh, Simon Culhane has been talked to by Laurie Maines to prepare for this uh, second half. So there's Laurie Maines heading back to his seat.
So still half time here at Newlands in Cape Town. And you can see that Jack Rowell heading back to his seat as well and under real pressure England have 40 minutes to try to close this enormous gap New Zealand has on them So you can see, I think, by the looks on those young people's faces, they're not happy with the scoreline at the moment. So the second half begins from Newlands. Rugby World Cup 95, second semi-final. New Zealand leading by the massive and surprise scoreline of 25 to 3. Offside play early in the second half. And the New Zealand captain is on the deck and slowing it up, Sean Fitzpatrick. New Zealand showing excellent control at that kick. Robin Brook is really a master in the air and he took control of it. And Johnson offside round the edge of the rack. Good start for New Zealand. Want to keep this positive attitude to the game through the second half. One thing we've got to say, John, is that apart from those breaks where the New Zealanders got the tries, England have shut the game down a bit in the last 20, haven't they? Yes, but done nothing about it, uh, Keith. It shut it down, but not for any purpose. So there it is for Bashup again, who's had such a control in the first half. And then a little push out towards Lomu. And Lomu's chasing hard. And the bounce has gone to Little. Tron fouled. Lomu. Three for Lomu. That's the second half start they were looking for. And John Lomu continues to amaze the rugby world. 120 kilograms of prime lean Kiwi beef. And he's in for three tries. Brilliant display from the youngster, but there's some really good lead up here by Walter Little. And then Josh Cromfelt reads it brilliantly to clear the ball wide to Lomu, who's in space, and Carling can't bring him down. Excellent start from, from this all-black side, and the machine has started again. Sensation 5 World Cup. England, can they scramble something here, cobble something together in this hour of disaster against New Zealand? Here is a kick by Mertens, which was a bit rushed, but the bounce is interesting. And Mertens has got it. Bash it now to Zinzan Brook and he's hooked that one out on the full would have been interesting if it had gone to Fitzpatrick's hand there such skill and confidence with the All Blacks they really are taking him and there was another display Underwood and Cat letting that up and under bounce in front of them and nearly giving the All Blacks another chance to score 30 points to 3 
Back on the New Zealand side. A backhander this time. Zinzan can put the kick out on the full. The lineouts in the first half were very even. And with that one going to New Zealand, they're all set square at the six all. And the penalties were six to England and four to New Zealand. Ian Jones has had a magnificent lineout game. Now, he had some question marks about his performance against uh, Scotland. But boy, as he come up trumps here today, he's getting some very vital ball for the All Blacks. Rodber, Morris, Andrew, Guscott. The tackle was little. No, it wasn't. It was maybe Bunce. Mumfeld, I think it was. The penalty is for going over the top. And they've taken the tack. And there's a head high by Lumber, which might be punished. Joel Dume has the uh, bag out and the trouble on the far side. crowd is chanting off off for something the referee saw originally referee Steve Hilditch of Ireland a penalty for England it was for the head high by Jonah Lomu on Tony Underwood now they took a tap previously and they're going to take a tap again they're looking for seven pointers and they're not going to get them when they fumble like that Ubogu lost it New Zealand over the top well clearly an English side that are not used to running the ball are going to have trouble because those skills are just not there and there they looked to bring their big forwards into a, a set move, set penalty but it went sadly astray and it's given the All Blacks a scrum another big drive by Mertens finds Cat Osman lets it bounce behind the goal line England can't win doing that. No point in just kicking over the goal line and giving the opposition the opportunity to have the quick drop out. A charge down there. Went over the 22 minutes. Now come to Basham and they kick it out. England have got no, no shape, have they, John? Absolutely no pattern to the game. They don't know how to attack from the back. They're not getting back in numbers and therefore just kicking aimlessly. Tap penalties, not organised. They really look a very, very ordinary side. There's how even the lineouts are. Moore, Dean Richards. Some of these guys have a lot of football. Bayfield going high there. His 26th test match. Dean Richards is 45th. But being cleaned out here at the moment by 30 to 3. And no edge in the back line to offer as yet. Carling. Tony Underwood and Lomu again. Lomu had him in control all the time. Excellent defence. John Lomu. Because Underwood put outside him. He didn't get phased. He sat with him. He let him go outside, then grabbed him and threw him into touch. Not a pretty tackle. But Very effective. Effective, and Lomu's had a dream game. Three tries. Millions of words have been written about him. And I guess all the writers here and the thousands will be looking to their laurels to come up with new stuff to describe this power sensation. This runaway truck in the New Zealand back line. Well, he's well offside. Excellent line-out take from Robin Brook then. Again, getting control for the All Blacks. Well, there's not many people in, you, in rugby that are going to be able to stop John Alomo, and uh, I'll be interested to see what um, the South African winger Small has to say this week in the preparation going to the final. There's Clark disrupting. Little swings it clear to Bunce. Bunce decides to take the tackle, but rolls into a good position. Wilson, Bashup, a little left foot push ahead. Cat. 
And again, that long drive by Cat, which is going to be comfortably fielded by Frank Bunce. Walter Little. And that's how well it's going for New Zealand at the moment. And you see those black caps there. They're from New Zealand support groups, and they're delighted with the player Walter Little and others. There's a rugby club in Port Elizabeth called the All Blacks Rugby Club. You remember the story of them coming up to see the All Blacks in uh, Bloemfontein? I'm told by them, the team organiser that their numbers have gone up from 210 players uh, to over 500 since the game in Bloemfontein. And uh, some of them are here again today to support the New Zealand team. Complaints from both teams at that line-out time. It's gone to Richards. 22-metre line there. Andrew, a high kick. Wilson coming forward, so is Guscott. Well taken by Jeff Wilson. A good, confident take. Remember, early in the tournament, he was tipped up and fell on his shoulder very heavily. Bash it. The narrow side. That's Clark with Cronfeld going over the top. It's there for... Well, it's buried tight. Rory Underwood. Andrew. Again, offering only the high kick. Zinzan Brook. It was Fitzpatrick, in fact. Well, I think the English have decided that uh, rather than kick deep now, they may start and kick, uh, just put the ball in the air. But uh, really, they've got no chase. They've got no enthusiasm for the game. It's been taken out of them by this black juggernaut here today. Black magic, John. S certainly. We've heard that before. No change to the score. Just the Lomu try in the second half. 25 to 3 it was at halftime. And now it's 30 to 3 to New Zealand and half an hour to play. Pop to Wilson. He's outside his man. Osman. Bash it. Bash him away. 35 to 3. The hits keep on coming. And how pertinent to me, pertinent to me that Graham Basham is the try scorer. He's had a sensational game. He's put away by Zinzan Brook. He gets into space, throws the ball over to Wilson. Wilson does the work. He's got Osman in support. Osman takes the last man, and Basham has no one next to him other than a clapping Mike Brewer as he goes in untouched. Look how he Osman cradles does it well. Cradles the ball, John. You watch. Look. A well-deserved try. Graham Bashup having a very fine all-round game. He is manipulating the attack from behind the scrum. He's been, to me, one of the very, very fine players of this tournament. Doesn't get a lot of recognition, but he's certainly showing it today. Listen to the hum in the crowd. Mertens away. 35 to three England are just too slow every one of their forwards I mean that was a back row move and their loose forwards got nowhere near their defensive call and Bashup cradled the ball like a little baby as he ran to the line Andrew kicks out five tries a drop goal now eight points from the boot of Mertens 35 to three 28 minutes to play this is a sensational result as it stands at the moment. Cat. Andrew bounces it to touch again. There was nowhere for England to go. Well, that, that's, that is, uh, you know, two things there. They, are, they are, lack ideas on attack, but excellent defence by New Zealand. They covered the ground. They covered the holes. They got into the space, and they said to Andrew, you've got nowhere to go but to kick for touch. Jones and Bayfield. Tall timber of both sides. Wow. 
got a jump there. Lifted. Well, he seemed to be in the clear to me, but... Morris. Ubogu. Ten metres out. This is England's best position for a while. Clark. Two defenders on him. Little and Olo Brown. Morris here. Ubogu. Thrown down by Kornfeld, still presented for Morris. Craig Dowd is going to be called out by the referee. Craig Dowd is protesting that when the referee said he stamped on a leg. It's a penalty for England. They're going to take the tap. They're still trying for the big seven pointers. 35 to three down. And look at the way they're all down facing it. There's a nice little kick by Morris. A good move. Knock on and goal. Five meter scrum. I've seen that move. Seen that move used before. I can't understand the uh, ruling. Surely this should be a dropout. Knocked on and he's given the scrum to the All Blacks. All Black scrum really taking it to England. Concentration on their places. They're not easing at all. They're keeping the pressure on the English scrum. Look how low they are on the second row. Brewer comes up, pushing hard. And Mertens makes a kick down towards halfway. Cat has it. Cat banging it high. Osborne has a ton of time here. And claims the fair catch. Well, it's been said about that England forward pack. They're so big, they block out the sun. Not today. A slow shake of the head from the man in centre screen, Jack Rowell. That impact is a territorial advantage in the second half. It's been... Uh, poorly used by the English. Tap kick, penalty against the uh, All Black forwards. Clark and Rodbert, 22 metre line. Martin Johnson, Ben Clark. <laughs> Referees call for a scrum. Great defence, New Zealand. They were under pressure then. Three charges through the forwards. Clark's body was a little high as he went in towards the post. We'll keep an eye on it. But there were plenty of black jerseys there to hold him up and to make sure that when the ball went down, it was down on their bodies underneath. What can they do? Can they construct a try? Will it be a blindside move with their loose forwards? Or will they try to spin it to the left to Andrew? Clark has got Rodber's gone away to the right. Rodber gets it now. Bad pass. Osman. Osman, a little knock on there. A teensy knock on. A scrum for England. A metre short of the line. Again, but England just failing to do the basics of controlling the pass then on that blindside move. Something new going to have to happen for an English backline. They're going to have to do something out open. Rodbert crashing for the line. Well stopped again. Kornfeld paying the price for that one. Andrew. Guscott. Cat. Caught again. Short of the line. Morris. Andrew. Richards. 
Hook back on the New Zealand side. Now it's gone to Dewey Morris. Underwood. And they've got the try. Rory Underwood. But there's no celebration. Consistent pressure there from England. They finally got the try, but I'll be interested to see the replay. But I thought Underwood might have gone into touch. Morris has thrown him a long pass. He gets hit in a tackle by Osborne. It's a matter of whether he gets his ball down. And I'd say he's clearly in touch first. So a bit of luck running England's way with a try to Underwood. His foot was over the sideline before the try was down. And so a bit of luck has gone England's way. 35 to 8, New Zealand lead the kick to come. And that's a fine kick by Andrew. And it's 35 to 10. England have scored their first try. The All Blacks won't be happy with the English getting that try because that's their pride in their defence and they have defended magnificently today but finally numbers, they were outdone for numbers and Underwood got the try although clearly his foot in touch. And there's a little mistake by Mertens. Now this surely will be a signal to New Zealand that they've got to tighten up and maintain their discipline. They've uh, played with the courage and the daring. But the disciplines must be maintained. Three quarters of the game gone. They've split. England have split both sides. Whether they'll use Carling to the right or Andrew Catt and Gus Gott to the left. by Rod Vardis for New Zealand. Zinzan Brook at halfway. Cat coming across. Good bounce by Brook. Great skills by the All Black number eight. Might have hurt his leg then when he got uh, tackled, but great skill. Bashup did very well then getting in and interfering with Rodva's ball. But I do think Brook might be having his problems with his leg. He signaled towards the bench. So Larson may come into the game. Bashup. Mertens straight to Lomu. Lomu to Little. Kronfeld and Brewer running fast to join. That was a slick move and a lovely pass by Lomu. Beautiful pass by Andrew Mertens. He missed his second and centre and he hit Lomu perfectly on the outside and had a little coming in support, but that time got Carling's defence handle stopped. Here's Blair Larson warming up. 22 metre line. Robin Brooks been called out by the referee. Robin Brook has been called out for some incident there. Fitzpatrick as well. Special caution for a punch thrown from the second row by Robin Brook, which hit a prop. But and unfortunately, I think it was a black prop he hit. An all-black prop. And so there's been a couple of cautions issued. Well, look, he claimed they're claiming there was a headbutt by Brian Moore in here. So there's Brook number five, you see him on towards the left. Well, the result of the game is on the scoreboard. No matter what happens in those uh, close quarter exchanges, it's all there on the board, 35 to 10, 70 minutes to play. Zinzan Brook certainly in trouble, I think. Uh, 
So Brooke is, well, it doesn't look too serious. What a drop goal that was. That inspirational drop goal that pushed New Zealand out to 18 to nil. And this fine all black leaves the field. And Blair Larson, once Brooke has been cleared by a doctor, will come into the game. And look at this, a little secrets being passed over to Larson from Paul Henderson, who is sitting up in the stand next to Laurie Maines. Guscott. Mertens makes the stop. <laughs> so you'll see number 19 come on now, Blair Larson. And so he's going into the side of the scrum and Mike Brewer heads to the back. England again with a big open either side. What are they going to do? That got made the space on the right. And Carling's left it behind. And Tony Underwood makes a dash. And Robin Brook tackles. And Dewey Morris goes hunting. Morris. Richards. Rodber. Morris again. Frank Bunce envelops him with the tackle. It's gone between Brian Moore's legs to bash it to Larson. Little. Bash up again. Osborne is up. Jeff Wilson inside Rodber. Osborne again. Osborne. forward pass some of the reputations of the England tacklers are in tatters as a result of this kind of running well Osman made a brilliant run but maybe he should have passed inside because I'm sure a try would have been scored had he cleared the ball inside but this uh, English, English team they've had to tackle and they haven't made them Brian Moore, I think, looking back to that ruck, will be on a Minty's ad for sure as that ball went between his legs while he stood there. Back to the kick, the clearance. And up at the other end of the field, way out of the picture, there's a disturbance. Someone is on the field. And there's about uh, 20 policeman coming in to take away a streaker and that might be the first streaker of rugby, rugby world cup 95 now the referee has quietly expressed an opinion to sean fitzpatrick what a disappointment it was he says it's always a man who streaks <laughs> and look at them with zinzan brook at the ankle the ice is going on there's another match to be played, perhaps. Robin Brook. Outside arm is called that time by referee Hilditch. Tim Rodber. Clark, Richards, Bayfield, all the big ones in there. Andrew, Carling. They've got the bounce there. Rob Andrew again. Clark. Dewey Morris. Carling. And Carling has scored a try after getting the deflection from a kick to touch. 35 to 15, 12 minutes to play.
Well, he really has had to do something because I think he's been one of the major disappointments for England today. The ball went right from Andrew's quick hands and then Carling puts a little chip up in the air. The ball is tipped in back into his arms and he gets a free run into the corner. But I was just looking at him in two earlier movements, Keith, and he showed no interest at all on attack. And he's been a, diff a very, very disappointing captaincy display in the midfield from Will Carling today. Andrew with the conversion attempt. It's deflected away. 35 to 15. Just a little over 10 minutes to play. this concern about the Achilles tendon I think of Zinzan Brook Didn't two mistakes from the uh, New Zealanders at kickoff they're just getting a little untidy and it would be a shame for them to finish this way because they'll want to go off the field knowing that they've really put England to the sword but England are slowly getting some pride back into it and they're being helped at the moment by a few inaccuracies from the All Blacks Richards Morris, intercept by Bashup, Lomu, hands off Tony Underwood, Lomu, heading for four, but that's the most brilliant quartet of tries you'd ever wish to see. Remember the number 11, it's etched in his eyebrow, and he gets his fourth Watch try. Watch him here. Some good work by Basham. He gets his hands on the ball and quickly turns the attack. And Underwood beaten on the outside clearly. And Lomu decides inside cap. The try line's there. A brilliant exhibition by the young winger. But how he was helped by his number nine, who's had one of the sensational games at halfback. Lomu, all power, all step. No opposition. He leaves him behind as he goes in for try number four. And New Zealand are running into the final of World Cup 95. They lead by 40 to 15. The highest score New Zealand ever scored against England is 42. And they've equaled that today. 42 to 15, it was the same score in Wellington in 1985, but look at this man, four tries today. James Small will no doubt be watching this display of power on that wing, working out what can he do about it. England played out of the game by the brilliance of the New Zealand team effort. England have tried to muscle their way into the game in the last quarter of an hour, but they've conceded that try to Lomu. After scoring two in a row, Rory Underwood and Carling. And now a penalty has gone their way. Nine minutes to play. Penalty count is uh, two to one against New Zealand. It's 11 to five. Two to one in ratio, 11 to five. England going to try another tap move. But what have they got on? Andrew just got Carling. Ripped away by Moore. Tackled by Fitzpatrick. Jeremy Guscott, referee signaling an advantage. The All Blacks were clearly offside. Tap and run. Ben Clark. Carling! Two for Carling. Still no smiles, no celebration. Brave flags waving. Morris does well. Clark throws the crucial pass. He puts Carling outside the defence. Lomu holds as he should have. 
on Underwood waiting for the inside tackle, but it didn't come. Carling, he holds Lomu out, and the saving tackle from uh, Frank Bunce is unsuccessful. Carling coming into the game late, but I think he'll look back at the first half when he needed to be in the game. Andrew adds the conversion. Seven minutes to play, two tries to Will Carling. Three of the last four tries have gone to England, but it's still a 20-point gap against Jack Rowell's team. It's an advantage for England from lost forward by New Zealand. Morris kicking. Tony Underwood in the chase. Osborne, a fumble. Tony Underwood to Jason Leonard. He's been a sparky little customer, Di Morris. And there is Clark and Will Bogle, England, playing for pride now. And there's Leonard taking out Jones, I think it was. Big Bayfield is caught. 22 meter line. Morris again. Andrew. Rodber. Kicked away by Bashup. Cat is back. Cat finds Guscott. Guscott going straight. But look at that from Jonah Lomu in defense on Clark. He slammed him from the ground from behind. Jonah Lomu, a lot of questions about his defense. He came from nowhere to clean out Ben Clark. Look at this, John. Brilliant run from Guscott, but look at Lomu come in. I'm sure the pass from Guscott to Clark with a yard and a half forward, but it didn't matter. Lomu made sure he capitalized on the opportunity. He hit him with the piano. Great kick, Andrew Mertens. He really punched that. John, there have been very few lineouts in the second half. Yeah, interesting. The game has been very, very quick in the second half, and I'd say those forwards will be very, very tired. And that's why the game's opening up, I think, Keith. That's why you're seeing the break started to be made. England starting to break the line a bit. Fitzpatrick got an injury at the moment. A bit of concern in the New Zealand camp. Well, Andrew Mertens has three conversions and a penalty goal. 97 points in Test Rugby. And can he get to 100 in his fifth international? In fact, it's Mike Brewer who has the problem. So he's done something to a collarbone. You see Fitzpatrick signaling into the little hutch where the New Zealand reserves are. Richard Lowe and Norm Hewitt tossing up for going on. All Blacks will want to finish strongly in this last three or four minutes. And they will here. Well secured by Larson. Robin Brook. Big pass out to Walter Little. The half break to Bunce. Good run by Bunce. Carried Carling with him. Nice presentation again for Bashup. Mertens comes around with a drop kick. And through it goes. It's a hundred points in test rugby in just five tests for the little Canterbury first five. And it's 45 to 22. He's the fastest to a hundred points in test history. Full credit to the youngster. You watch him position himself. He got outside Leonard and then he's kicked back across the team straight down the middle. Outstanding skills. So that's the biggest score New Zealand have ever clocked up against England. And what a final of the World Cup it's going to be in seven days, six days from now. Rodber at the, towards the 22. Back between his legs. Andrew Guscott away from Kronfeld. 
Olo Brown, the tackler. Again, Morris. Again, Andrew. Rory Underwood kicking for his brother's side, Lomu, and Lomu is safely back. Well turned, John Olomu, because that's something he's got to do. He turned early and always read the kick. Well done in defence. Pretty tired, both these teams. Now, it's been a very frenetic pace in the second half. Three minutes to play. Andrew Mertens. Going to ask you a hard question in a minute, John, about where do you think this victory sits in the recent history of New Zealand rugby? 45 to 22 in a semi-final against England. Another penalty for England, pulling it down. Taken by Morris, who's been a real sharp little player. Lobs a pass to Moore, to Ben Clark. All Blacks are calling for a knock on them there. Corner flag in the background. They're trying to stay on their feet. Over the top. New Zealand just hanging on really in defence here. To answer your question, Keith, this has got to be one of the greater victories that New Zealand's had in recent years because of the way they've achieved it. They've used both back power and forward strength and they've had a lot of skill and they've used the ball well the whole it's a great team effort and that's all you can say and that's the only way you win a world cup is to have a comprehensive team display Three, two, one, go. here comes the tap england still trying to get points martin johnson is caught short and it's there again for morris andrew Carling. Frank Bunce has him. In goes Kronfeld. It's there for Tim Rodber to Morris. Rory Underwood. Well, referee's given a try there, but did he cross behind one of the players? Yeah, there's clearly some shepherding, and uh, Wilson was taken out. But full credit to England. You know, they have really kept going, and none better than the little halfback, Dewey Morris. He really has kept trying and trying. Watch the ball here. Rodber throws it to Morris, who throws a wide pass to Underwood. Underwood is uh, comes inside, but clearly Gus got, took Wilson out and mo opened up the passage for him to score the try. 11 tries to Rory Underwood. He's now the top try scorer in Rugby World Cup history, and he's the second highest of all time with 47 in all his tests. And this will probably be the end of the game at 45 to 27. New Zealand aren't interested in charging for the kick. It may be a 45-29 score line. It is. And New Zealand are through to the Rugby World Cup final for 1995 with this wonderful victory today. 45 to 29. And the young Kiwi supporters come on and pat the backs of their heroes and none bigger than the one you see there so admired throughout this country and throughout the rugby world and four tries to John Olomu led the way <laughs> tremendous victory and Lomu off taking the hands of the England team and boy they know they've been to the races Carling the England team are out they finished strongly they scored four of the last five tries in the game New Zealand scored six tries and two dropped goals 45 to 29 what a result and so in the next weekend's play, it'll be South Africa against New Zealand. The dream final that this country has hoped for as they host their first ever World Cup tournament. Desperately disappointed England players came to the sideline and sportingly 
clap the New Zealanders off the field, offering them their congratulations. It was as much as they could do for a brilliant start by New Zealand, a composed middle, a slightly shaky finish, but who's worrying with a score of 45 to 29. John Hart. Well, we've just seen a great display by New Zealand, and whilst they've had some defensive lapses towards the end, you would be wrong to even quibble about that because their power and strength, their magic ability of their backs to score tries, the forward pack where we thought they might have problems, you must have, take your cab off today to the Robin Brooks and Ian Joneses at line-out time who got New Zealand enough possession. And then the power in the midfield, Walter Little cons consistently searching. But for me, the two players of the game, clearly John Alamu, who had an absolute brilliant game, attack and defence, and that's a critical thing to say, because if he's had question marks, they've been in defence, but today, no. And the others were Graham Bashup, who I thought sparked many of the attacks, was really an enthusiastic supporter of the All Black effort here today. But full credit to the All Blacks, that is one of the better all-round displays of rugby football that you would see. England taken apart, having no answers at the start, responding at the end when the game had got so fast and the opposition were tiring. But I'd only say one thing in conclusion. If you want to run the ball, you have to have an attitude to it throughout the game. And one wonders what, the, what uh, England may have done had they came out with an attitude to attack throughout the game rather than only in desperation. Peter Williams is with Sean I don't think I've ever seen you more content and more happy. That must be one of the most satisfying victories of your career, I take it. Yeah, it is. It's... Uh... Had a big build up all week and uh, a lot of memories of 93 and uh, you know, that's, that was part of it but you know, just knowing that we could do it and, uh, and being part of a winning team we put a lot of effort into it and um, I'm sure Will sure will agree it was, a, it was a great game of rugby and, uh, and a game that, uh, that we wanted desperately and uh, at the end of the day uh, you know, we, we got the start we wanted and uh, you know, just a, a fantastic feeling and uh, that's five out of the way, we've got one to go on Saturday and you know, we're looking forward to playing the box. Uh, um, everyone's been telling us ever since I've been here we'll be looking forward to the final between South Africa and, uh, and New Zealand but uh, until now um, you know, it hasn't, hasn't been and uh, you know, we're looking forward to it and uh, just pleased that this one's out of the way. We've got to very quickly get on to that man in the number 11 jersey for the All Blacks, Jonah Lomu. Uh, four tries and uh, I guess he stamped his impression on the game what within about 60 seconds or was it two minutes at the start? Yeah, it was, and uh, you know he got room to move, and uh, that was uh, that was the idea, and uh, we we kept those uh, deficiencies that he's got, we kept those hidden, um, but uh, you know, he's got a bit of work to do, and uh, he loved it, and uh, and it's good to see him running out there. I definitely wouldn't want to tackle. I'm sure Will will feel the same way too. Much was made in the build-up to this game, Sean, about it being uh, a contrast of styles between New Zealand and the way that England play the game. Do you feel in some way now that the expansive game that the All Blacks have promoted since you've been here uh, has been vindicated today? Oh, I don't. Uh, I think I think England showed that they can play the expensive game too, and they, they scored tries out wide. And, you know, Will scored a couple, um, but it was an enjoyable game, and uh, that's what, that's what I play the game for. I play the game to enjoy it, and uh, and uh, I've played in a few games that I've enjoyed, and a few haven't. But today was an enjoyable game, and uh, you, know, you get forwards hitting rucks, and you get good clean ball, and uh, that's what the crowd comes to see. Um, and number eight's kicking drop goals. Well, he's been trying. If he's been trying for a while. I'm sure Will will go back to, to the Lions in '93. He's tried a few there, but um, yeah, it's pretty hard. <laughs> it's pretty demoralising when a number eight kicks a drop goal from halfway. And also, a lot was made uh, finally, Sean, about uh, the, the expected dominance that England were going to have in the lineouts. I guess you'd be pleased the way that Robin and uh, Ian Jones were able to compete, and, and down the back, you guys were able to compete pretty well, even on England's throw. Yeah, well, I'll have to look at the look at the tapes. Uh, I wasn't looking at those too too much, but yeah, we, we were just committed, and uh, yeah, it was, it was a good game of rugby. I'm not going to get too carried away because we've got another another week to go, and uh, you know, we've got work to do for next week. And I'm sure the South Africans feel the same way that they've got some work to do. Uh, wouldn't have been the ideal game for them yesterday, um, but we're looking forward to it. Um, I'm sure the South Africans are too. Enjoy your celebration, enjoy your victory, and uh, get down to hard work in what a couple of days' time. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Peter. Thanks. Well, he's a very tired. The young man is Sean Fitzpatrick, uh, speaking there with Peter Williams of Television New Zealand. In respect uh, of the English team, he certainly gave them full praise for their role in the game. Uh, directed at the England captain, Will Carling. Uh, some rather stunned New Zealand supporters. And here is Will Carling with ITV's Jim Rosenthal. Will Carling, you're man managing a wry smile after that, but uh, what a torrid experience that must have been for you and your team. Yeah, I think we came across a side who... Uh, Played some quite unbelievable rugby in the first 10 minutes, um, you know. And uh, I think when people play like that, you just got to hang on in, and we did. And uh, we scored some great tries at the end, but they they were fairly awesome today.
They hit you very early on with a big punch. How crucial was that? It was a fairly big punch, uh, number 11. Um, <laughs> it is. I mean, you can't... You, you give 10 points. Uh, though we didn't give them, but uh, when you go 10 points down, it makes it very hard. And uh, they played some very controlled, disciplined rugby and, and scored some good tries. And unfortunately, um, we just couldn't stop them. You, you know, miss a tackle against a side like that and they're going to score. 25 points down at one stage. You did come back pretty well towards the end. Yeah, I mean, I was, you know, delighted. They put a lot of hard work in just as a squad, not just the 15. And, uh, you know, I wanted them to show a bit of pride that it has not all gone to waste. And I was delighted with the way they did come back and uh, played some great rugby. You know, we were shattered out there and, and yet they still kept going. And I think it's a mark of a, of a good side and one that I'm very proud with. How do you stop this fellow Lomu? <laughs> Well, we didn't come up quite with, we, it's easy for me to say, yeah. we didn't quite come up with a solution today. Um, I'm hoping not to see him again myself, but uh, if we do, I think we'll have to work at that one. He's awesome, he's a freak, and the uh, sooner he goes away, the better. <laughs> and just, uh, just finally, you've got a very important game coming up now in the week, because I think you've got to win it to qualify for the next, the next World Cup tournament. Yeah, I think so. I think just for our pride, you know, we wanted to win, and uh, we're desperate to come third, not fourth, and so, you know, we'll work very hard, I think, to win that one. Thanks very much, Will. Pleasure. Disappointed captain of the England team. He's talking, of course, about the third playoff, third place playoff match, which will be England against France at Pretoria next Thursday afternoon. But the big grand final in Rugby World Cup 95 will be New Zealand, and there are some fans. New Zealand against South Africa. And boy, the talk, the discussion has just started here at the World Cup in 1995. Let's have a look at this again. These wonderful tries for Lomu. This was the first one. Beautiful running. His balance was magnificent here because he really lost his footing and he, he went straight over the top of Cat. And that was typical of his day. Exuberance. Bashup again, creating space. Lomu pushes off one. Beats two and straight over the top of three. How do you stop him? I don't know. Watching here again, Bashup clears a wide pass and this is little making the break and this is an outstanding try firstly to glenn osman who goes in creates the opportunity watch cronfeld coming in support walter little's got clear back to alice and the ever vigilant cronfeld gets the try in the corner brilliant play by walter little but good control from glenn osman both he and little kept their heads osman waited waited drew the tackle gave it to little little came out to see if he could give it back to osborne but the defense kept coming osborne did the right thing stood on his feet went in field and turned the ball and cromfeld had perfect position to score look at the pass from zinzanbrook cleared the space right across field and lomu look at rob andrew oh straight past him goodbye nurse And still, look at the pass from Zinzanbrook. He's done everything today. He's passed the ball halfway across the ground, and he's kicked the drop kick. Lomu wrong-footed Andrew. Did that better than people may give him credit for, because he actually stood Andrew up, went outside him, and then the rest was just a canter into the post. Watch here again. On the left, Mertens puts a little chip through. Lomu on the chase. Little does well. Cromfelt did superbly here because he went infield and then he knew that John Alomu was out left and he turned a very fine pass out wide to give him his next try. Well done, Josh Cromfelt. This is what a loose forward has to do to keep the link. And Lomu says thank you, pushes off the would-be tackler. The try scored. Watch here. Bashup does the work, gets into space, puts Wilson on the outside. Wilson away, and Bashup stays in support. Osborne, Osborne does the right thing, and Bashup gets a very, very well-deserved try, supported by a clapping Mike Brewer. Zinzanbrook, loose forwards from England, non-existent, standing still, always a target to be beaten. 
Wilson did the work well, got outside his man, took the instant defence, and then Osborne did the job and bash it in support. Clear try. England blindside defence clearly exposed. And then they fought back. It went out. It went back in field to Dean Richards. And you keep an eye on Zink. I think the ball will come to Dewey Morris. He goes right, left. He fires a wide one to Underwood, who I think went into touch clearly in, and gives, given the try. But the All Black protestations weren't lived with by referee Hildert. Again, the probe comes this time from um, Morris, who clears for Carling. Carling puts a little chip. It's charged down, but unfortunately straight back into his hands, and the English skipper scores in the corner. Watching here, Morris blindside, and clear run to Carling, and Carling puts a kick up, the charge down, but comes straight back into him, try. Morris really working hard, drives through the tackle, but look at Bashup's skill. Not only did he stop the pass, he turned it to Lomu, and Underwood said, not again, because Lomu's gone round him and left him, flying, and then Cat says, what do I do? And Lomu said, it doesn't matter, I'm going inside you, and he scored another try. A brilliant debut, a brilliant effort by the winger. Morris again, non-stop, but look at Bashup's catch, and he turned it back to Lomu so quickly. The skill of the halfback has been a very major factor in New Zealand's performance here at Newlands today. Still the tries come. Running on from Clark, Morris the tap kick, gives it to Clark. Clark makes ground, throws a wide pass. The two locks are there, but they're not going to make the tackle. Bunch tries to get it across and save, but it's a try to Carling. Well done, John. There was one other try right in the very last minute of the game, scored by Rory Underwood. There's the point scorers in Rugby World Cup. Gavin Hastings, 104. Thierry Lacroix, 103. Andrew Merton, 72. But add on the 28 he scored earlier this year against Canada, and he's got to... 100 points in just five test matches. The interesting thing there, John Alamu, 35 points. I think now he and Mark Ellis, with seven tries each, will be the leading try scorers in this World Cup tournament. So there it is, six tries, four to Lomu, one to Bashup, one to Cronfeld, two drop goals for New Zealand, one by Zinzan Brook, and one by Andrew Mertens, who added the three conversions and the penalty for 12 points. And uh, for England, 29 points in reply. The final score here from Newlands in Cape Town. New Zealand 45, England 29, and we're getting set now. The build-up has started already for the World Cup final next weekend when New Zealand will play South Africa. This is Keith Quinn on behalf of John Hart from Newlands.